Welcome to Running the Table, the podcast where we run through everything on the table in the world of sports. And this episode, I'm flying solo because I want to talk about my Green Bay Packers, who tasted defeat in the playoffs yet again at the hands of the San Francisco 49ers. So without further ado, let's run it. So the Green Bay Packers, their improbable run in the 2023 season comes to an end in the divisional round of the playoffs against who else but the San Francisco 49ers a team that has had our number numerous times. I hate reruns, and this one's getting kind of old. This is the fifth time that we've lost to them in the playoffs since 2012. They lost by a score of 24 to 21, and this one was one of the more heartbreaking ones because when it seemed that victory was certain with a seven-point lead going into the fourth quarter, the 49ers stormed back, and the Packers couldn't quite Put the game away. The game as a whole was a back and forth affair, each team trading punches going blow for blow. There wasn't much offense in the first half as the 49ers held the advantage seven to six, but in the third quarter is where things really ramped up. The Packers offense turned on by scoring 15 third quarter points with a pair of touchdown passes from Jordan Love. The first one to Bo Melton, the second one to Tucker Craft. The two point conversion to Aaron Jones was good, but the San Francisco 49ers answered on their own with a rushing touchdown from Christian McCaffrey and then another one with a minute to go in the fourth quarter to take the 24 to 21 lead. Now, Jordan Love had an opportunity with a minute left, all three timeouts to take the Packers down the field and cement himself in Packer lore. But live by the gunslinger, die by the gunslinger. He threw a very painful interception to Dre Greenlaw to seal the Packers' fate and end their season. So taking a look at the game, there's a lot to learn from it. The main thing being the Packers' resiliency. They fought until the end. Let's not understate. The Packers took the NFC's best team the distance and gave them quite the scare. For most of the game, they outplayed them but their youth really showed through. This was their first true postseason run and a young team that had plenty of opportunities. They made their fair share of mistakes. And when the 49ers made mistakes, they couldn't quite capitalize. And at the end of the game in the fourth, with that seven point lead, they had opportunities to close out the game, but they just couldn't. This is a young team. You need to learn how to win. And this time they just didn't come through. So how our guys played, there was a lot of good and a lot of bad. Starting with quarterback, Jordan Love. Not his best game in the world. He was 21 of 34 for 194 yards, two touchdowns, and two picks. The good from Jordan is that he was able to navigate the pocket well and really extend plays. He made a couple big-time throws, including the ball to Romeo Dobbs on the left sideline and both touchdowns to Melton and Kraft. The bad, however, whatever it was, that tear that he's been on over the last however many weeks, it wasn't there in the fourth quarter. The last two drives of the game really stalled out. They couldn't throw over the middle throughout the duration of the game to save their lives. No, in small part because of Fred Warner. He's an absolute game racker up the middle. But the real backbreaker was the brutal interceptions, especially that last one to lose the game. He said in the postgame presser that he committed a mortal sin, throwing back against the grain into triple coverage. And, you know, as it probably should have been, it was intercepted. Now, perhaps the rain impacted the throws. The rain was crucial for both quarterbacks. It was more evident with Brock Purdy as he struggled to get his hands dry and grip the ball properly all game. It affected him on numerous throws where they were off target, and it was really uncharacteristic for how well Brock Purdy played. But on Jordan Love, you got to think that even though he wasn't showing it, the rain did have some effect, but it doesn't excuse the bad decision of the interception that he threw. Now, the run game led by Aaron Jones continued to be on fire. He had 18 carries through 108 yards, and he had some big-time rushes. He fought for extra yards all night, and he was really the spark plug of that offense, especially on a key run that was really, really huge. On the defensive side of the ball, they did a really good job through three quarters, limiting the Niners' offense to 14 points, but... They really collapsed in the fourth. 
and Brock Purdy, he was making lots of mistakes all night. And the fact that he had zero interceptions on the game kind of blows my mind. Darnell Savage had a pick six in his hands that he dropped early in the game. That one really, really hurt. Joe Barry is a pretty common scapegoat among Packer fans. Will he retain his job? That is an incredibly difficult call for next season. And considering how well they played down the stretch, will he retain his job? Maybe. But we'll see what happens going forward. Special teams was a strength all night, especially with Keyshawn Nixon and his 73-yard kick return. Now the ball was punched out in the end, but Eric Wilson, it's a hell of a play to run down the field and jump on the ball and keep it in Green Bay's hands. That kind of hustle play, especially on special teams, goes a long, long way. Now moving on to the kicking game. Anders Carlson. He has struggled this year mightily. He's missed at least one kick in 10 of his last 12 games, and he's missed the most overall kicks in the NFL, including extra points. He went two of three from field goal range in this game. He made two from 29, but the one from 41 that could have extended the Packers lead and potentially put him away and put the Packers in a way better situation for that last drive, he missed. And it's really become a microcosm of his experience this year. And you got to feel bad for the kid. I mean, I do. He struggled for a lot of the second half of the season. His confidence is probably shot and he's getting killed in the media. When your head coach, Matt LaFleur, says that when he goes out there, you pray, it's not a good look. And a lot of Packers fans are calling for Anders Carlson to be cut. They are definitely at the least going to bring in some competition or perhaps a veteran to challenge him. Sucks to say he's probably a great kid. You don't want anybody to lose their job, but the NFL is a performance-based league. If you don't perform, especially if you've been playing the way Anders Carlson is playing, you are not going to last long. Although expectations were low, the Packers still find a way to punch in the gut and break your heart. But let's not forget how awesome of a game it was. The San Francisco 49ers are probably going to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl, and the Packers took them the distance. It just really sucks that this is another notch in a string of playoff defeats to the 49ers, especially when you're looking on the other side with Detroit. It really makes you think, man, what if, what if, what if? But this doesn't take away from the season that the Green Bay Packers had, which has gone far better than anyone could have ever expected. This is nothing to be upset about. Packer Nation, hang your head high because we had one hell of a year, especially starting two and five and then rallying to win seven of the last 10 regular season games and then going into the house of the big bad Cowboys and punching them in the mouth. That was really awesome to watch. We had our ups, we had our downs, but overall, this was an awesome season. Really, this was the season to figure out if Jordan Love was the guy, and we were hit with an absolute resounding, yes, he is the guy, he is the man. Anybody who's been watching this channel has known that I'm one of Jordan Love's biggest supporters. I have been rooting for him through the ups and the downs. Don't get me wrong, there were both. When you look at his numbers and how he's performed and how he's grown with this young receiver core and in this offense. I'm pretty confident in our quarterback situation. I'm also pretty confident in our future. I'm also pretty confident that Jordan Love is going to earn a big, big, big extension, and he should. I'm talking $50 million a year or more. Back up the Brinks truck, Jordan Love, get in that bag, and he deserves every single penny. With the rest of the team, the future is so, so, so bright. We have young stars emerging everywhere, especially guys that were rookies or second years. They made such an impact across the board. Offense, defense, special teams. Credit to Brian Gutekunst for not only taking the swing on Jordan Love, but the job that he's done over the last two drafts. It's honestly been incredible to see the growth and the development of this team. Hang your heads high, Packers fans. The future is going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Buckle in and enjoy the ride.
But that's all I got for my recap of the Packers 49ers game and the Packers season in general. If you want more content, we have all sorts of sports stuff, whether it's NFL, college basketball, that's coming soon. Tim is doing his boom buster believable. You better buckle in because that's going to be an epic series like always. If you want us to cover anything else, let us know. And until next time, you out.